Hey, this is Russ with Wing Saber Historical Fencing. Hi. We are going to continue Arlo step by step. Now, for this round of videos, we are going to remain very pedantic, very actual step by step. After today's set of videos, we're going to speed up slightly, but we are going to assume that you are actually practicing this on a crawl, then walk, then run basis, because that is what will provide you the effortless, instinctive, intuitive technique you need to perform the quote unquote sexy stuff at speed with an uncooperative partner. All right? So we're going to start from my bind of second. So as if Kat had cut at my flank, bang, I've got her weak on my strong. She is going to disengage. Notice how she did that from her upper arm, and she's going to come back, and she's going to disengage. This upper disengage is very, very important to practice, and you need to start practicing it now. Because from here, it is possible that I could thrust my glide. It is possible that I could try to steal a beat and throw a, a cheap and cheesy flank cut. What is much more likely is she comes here and I come there. And in order to get there, look what happened. She has to be fluent in going from here to here and practicing that action. Her other choice is, oh no, I don't know how to do an upper disengage, so I do it too slowly with my wrist. And now she tries to catch my blade too late, or God help her, she goes the other way and turns her face into a saber sandwich. I have seen this done at speed with a gent who did lots of circular parries. I love circular parries, but did circular parries when he didn't need to, because had he practiced, he would have simply gone, go for it, right there. You're simply coming above the blade. So from my side, if you'll parry, pop, here I am, here I go. Notice I don't even have to take an action with the wrist unless I wind up right here. Oh, there I am. If I get locked in, she's got an aggressive guard that's gonna trap me, then I may have to bend the wrist of the elbow ever so slightly before turning. And you can tell she wants to cut me. Yes, yes, we all know. From here, there I am. I can now jump up to fifth, jump back to third, go to my own second if I've come out and gone, oh crap, she's gonna do one of those sneaky things. Hop back. All right, so rotation of the upper arm. You are never going to escape this in a Radaelian system. We're not doing this. We're not doing this business. That's high tiers. George will show a lot of that. At some point, I'll do a video on high tier system moulinets. This isn't that. In the Italo Hungarians and for the Italians, she's there and she wants to disengage. That upper arm's got to rotate, and the back and chest muscles are what power it. When you first start this, you'll be tempted to use your deltoid and go, eh, eh, why does my deltoid feel tired? Because it's the wrong muscle for the job. You use your back muscles. So from this bind, my back muscles rotate my arm for me, and there I am. Nigh effortless. If you do this well enough, you may actually start getting blade whip. The flex these things have, you may flip the foible of your blade back and forth. Doesn't hurt a thing. It's a sign you're putting good torque on your blade. It will not interfere with your cut. It will not interfere with the thrust. Kat, any observations? Uh, no. All right, then I observe that you need to practice this until your eyes absolutely bleed. Yes, you just did the bagok thing, so practice it. You don't know that meme, do you? Legend of Korra. Oh, is that how that works? Yes. Okay. All right, so have fun and practice the thing rigorously. Do it. We've got more videos and content coming, so if you liked what you saw and it was useful for you, please stab the like button, slash subscribe, and punch the little bell icon so that you're notified immediately when new content comes available. Thanks, and go do the thing.